Hello, I'm Bob Jeffrey here in New York. Welcome to today's edition of World Makers. From film to fashion, tech startups to advertising, this is a city where things get made. And as the song goes, if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Today on World Makers, we'll meet some of the visionaries making the future happen right now. Today, I'm sitting down with Oliver Luckett, social media entrepreneur and founder and CEO of The Audience. Oliver, great to have you here on World Makers. Thanks for having me. I'd love to hear you talk a little bit about social media, only because every client we work with around the world is obsessed about it. Right. But frankly, I think there's a lot of misconceptions about it. You know, what's interesting is the times are changing very quickly with the advent of really frictionless distribution. And so what we focus on is building a publishing network that reaches now about 800 million people on a monthly basis. And we've taken the assets of celebrity and entertainment and entertainment brands, and we've created a new form of content uh, that's native to platforms like YouTube and Facebook and others. Uh, and we've learned that uh, by really creating content specific to that medium, uh, fans embrace it and they love it. And through that, we're able to build new businesses on top of that connection, that direct connection between an artist and their fans. So two things about your background that I find interesting. One is you seem to have had science and technology in your background, which is not yes. something you automatically associate with this. Right. And the second thing is you actually had an interesting career at Disney. I was brought into Disney as an insurgent within the company. Uh, Bob Iger, who I just tremendously respect, um, I think saw something in what we were doing and brought us in because at the time I walked into Disney, Disney had a uniform policy, just like every other studio, that said our content can only be on our owned and operated properties or in paid media channels. And so that meant that Disney content could not live on YouTube, could not live in Facebook, could not live on Twitter. And so when I walked into it, my job was to first change the paradigm, to talk to legal, to deal with very smart people there and, and convince them that it was okay to go fish where the fish were. And then once we got past that hurdle, really the question is, well, what content are we gonna put through this channel? So you go to the marketing department and they're like, Here's a one sheet on the movie, and here are a few photos from the behind the scenes. Go make it viral. And that's a difficult task. And so what we said is, we're going to listen to everybody. We're going to listen to marketing teams. We're going to listen to publicists. But we're going to measure everything. And so we're just going to see what content works the best. You can't dispute the data. And so we would try the marketing approach, and then we would try the PR approach. And what happened is, is that I was at the Venice Film Festival with the Pixar guys. They were getting their Lifetime Achievement Awards. And I watched how they presented their story. And I saw when John Lasseter would get up and talk about the, the love of the story and, and talk about how the fans relate to those characters, I realized that it was a lot of nostalgia, that, that people in our culture love something that is familiar to them and love a twist on that. And so I started looking at it and seeing, well, every time somebody would mention that, you know, Buzz Lightyear used to be a uh, red character and Woody was kind of bad at the beginning, people love that backstory. And then they love to see the art of the movies. And so uh, there was a real point of inflection in our concept when John opened up about 64 million pieces of art to us to publish inside of the social graph. And we saw an explosion. Today, Disney sits on 520 million people uh, connected to their brands inside of Facebook alone. There are millions connected in Twitter. There are millions connected in YouTube as well and in Google+. So we've built a content ecosystem for Disney uh, that lives on to this day. And when it comes around to marketing Toy Story 3 or selling tickets, you now have a captive audience and a platform to do so. Music is a fascinating category because if you look at the disruption that's hap right. happened there with iTunes, right. but even when I, again, going back to celebrities and actors and that type of talent, I mean, they are in control of their brand. They're that's having right. the conversation directly They've, with their fans, which is, you know, for better or for worse, it's a disruptive yeah. model. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a huge shift. What we have seen happen over the last two years is phenomenal in the music space. We have had record sellouts at fractions of what it costs normally uh, to sell tickets. Uh, for Steve Aoki, uh, we sold out a 60-city tour 
um, through Facebook's photo sharing platform and through content that we created around the experience and the audiences, allowing people to tag themselves in photos and creating a culture out of his live show. Uh, and, and suddenly, you know, we could sell out every venue with, with very minimal paid media marketing. But you, you, it, you're doing that for Pearl Jam, right? I mean, right, we just, we just sold out Wrigley Field in four minutes for Pearl Jam. And that was an amazing uh, Twitter campaign, uh, Facebook campaign, Google Plus campaign. The field uh, uh, started tweeting Eddie Vedder lyrics, and Eddie Vedder started tweeting the scoreboard right. from Bigley Field, and it created this amazing amount of hype. And so, what ended up happening is the mainstream media picked it up because that became news. We used Facebook uh, media buying to target people in the Chicago area. Uh, we targeted fans of it. You know, Facebook is this amazing platform that allows you. Uh, really through their ad products allows you to reach these custom audiences. When I think about the mythology of social media, right. uh, it is an iterative process. It's not like I'm going to come to you and say, oh, here's my marketing plan right. to go viral. It right. really doesn't work right. that way, which is how some people think. If you were sitting in a boardroom and somebody says to you, here's our six-month strategy and here's how it's going to work and these are the pieces and this is it, they are lying to you. They don't have any idea you have to look at the data coming in. You have to see what works. Which is another thing that's interesting, because I think, again, people think there's not a relationship between looking at the data, accumulating the audience, and having the metrics. And you're right. saying there is when it comes to social. There it's not just this is. mysterious black box that oh. we don't know what's going on. There's the most data. I mean, you know, the engineers at Facebook and at, at Google Plus and, and Twitter have built very sophisticated systems that, at a basic level, allow for feedback. If you put a billboard up on sunset, people drive by, there's no feedback. Maybe they honk, I don't know. You know. Maybe they yell at it, I don't know, but they do. If you put an object up on Facebook, they like it, they comment, they share it. And if you embrace that idea, which was that big Disney hurdle, right? Embrace it. We, we did remixes for Disney that became wildly popular. Uh, you know, when, with Hunger Games, the most popular form of marketing uh, in the social graph was a meme that said, we found bread in a toastless place, right? It, it, and so it's, it's riffing on culture and right. connecting the dots that, that make something popular. And so you can't, no matter how smart you are, you can try to you know, have a Miley Cyrus and have a catchy tune and have a great distribution channel, um, and, and you can try to hedge your bets on making something viral, but you really never know. You just have to watch and look and listen carefully. And so when you put an object into the social graph, you instantly see uh, whether or not it is gaining traction. Uh, we know now what color shirts people should wear to make viral distribution happen. We now know what time of day their audiences are online and ready for that content. When we see that content working, right, platforms like Facebook offer these amazing amplification products. So I can now see something popping on Facebook and then put a sponsored story behind it to keep it in the graph longer because I know fans like that. So in a nutshell, what you're saying is it's somehow it's the balance between art and science. There's That's the creative right. side of it where you need the inspiration, but there's also the science side of it. So. That's right. But this has been great, Oliver. I, thank you. I learned a lot just talking to you, in, you. in this brief interview. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching the latest edition of World Makers.